Hello and welcome to God's Word for today. My name is Brenda Gross. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Good to be coming to you by the way of the airways today. WVCT 91.5 FM, the Gospel Eagle, and Kiwi, Kentucky. And also WVTN, World Victory Television Network. It's the Gospel Eagle number two, right here in Kiwi, Kentucky. And by the World Wide Web, www.thegospeleagle, all one word, thegospeleagle.com. It's good to be with you. Pleasure to be coming to you today. And this is a day that the Lord has made for us to rejoice and to be glad in it. We can rejoice knowing that God is on our side. And if God be for us, who or what can have any success against us? Praise God if God is on our side. Let me tell you something. If we're on his side, he's on our side. You can count on it. You can count on him. If you're on God's side, he's on your side. If you honor him, he'll honor you. Praise God. And I think the psalmist said in Psalms 138 and 8, I think it is, that the Lord will perfect that which concerneth me. The Lord will perfect that which concerns me. And I think some people translate as perform that. See, we're not the performer. God is the performer. He will perform what concerns him and concerns you and in your life. God has something for everyone to do. And if you'll let him, he'll perform it in your life. You're not the performer, but God is. You're not the healer, but God is. You know, we can't heal anybody. But through and by the power of Jesus Christ in his name, the Bible says we can lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. But it's the power of God that heals them, not us. And just like the woman in the Bible that came to Jesus, she said, if I could just touch him, if I can just touch him, I know that I'd be whole. Well, she touched him. Well, the power went out from Jesus, healed her. And you know what Jesus said to her? He says, your faith has made, you, has made you whole. Woman, thy faith has made, you, has made you whole. Well, if her faith makes her whole, then our faith can make us whole. Praise God. Because God never changes. There's three things that abides forever. According to 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and 13, faith says now about a faith, hope, and love. You say, well, one day we won't need faith. Yes, we will. Because God doesn't change. It says they abide, now abideth, faith, hope, and love. He's talking about now we know in part and prophesying part, but when that which is perfect is come, that which in part shall be done away with. But, and he said, now abide. Now abides, now abideth. Faith, hope, and love. That hope is confident expectation of what God promised. That's what he would do. Expectation, confidence, expectation. Hope not as we use it today. Well, I hope so. That means, you know, that you're wishing. You know, you're hoping. I've heard some people say, I'm a hoping and a praying. Well, <laughs> You're leaving faith out. (laughs) But the Bible hope is confident expectation. Praise God. Hallelujah. Faith, hope, and love. So how many knows we ought to be working on them things? If they abide forever, then you know what? Your faith won't work without love. So we ought to be working on those things right there. Faith, hope, and love. Praise God. Every day, all day long. Thank God. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Your faith will make you whole. All kinds of ways to get healed in the Bible. All kinds of ways. Study them out. Child of God has no excuse for going around sick. You say, oh, now wait a minute. (laughs) I can just hear hear ears perking up and... and, hmm. And people said, no, now, wait a minute, you went too far. (laughs) No excuse. All the promises in him, the Bible says, are 
Yes, and amen. Yes, I'll do it. Yes, I will. Jesus said, I will be healed. Praise God. Third John 2, beloved, to wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. Praise God. How many knows as your soul prospers, you can be in health and prosper as your soul prospers? Praise God. Hallelujah. How do we prosper? By the Word of God. By getting that Word of God in us, by obeying the Word, being doers and not hearers only. <coughs> How many knows your faith can grow? In Luke 17, 5, the disciples said, Lord, increase our faith. Increase our faith. Oh, well, he told them how to, how to do it. He told them how their faith can be increased. Second Thessalonians, Paul told people, said, your faith grows exceedingly. How many knows your faith can grow? Our faith increases our capacity to receive from God. The things that God wants to do in us, wants to do for us. It increases our capacity to receive. Faith does. You know, Abraham, the Bible says in, I think it's Romans 4, where it talks about Abraham staggered not at the promise of God, but was strong in faith. Now listen, he staggered not at the promises of God. He didn't say at the circumstances, but he staggered not at the promise. At the promise of God. He didn't say, well, you reckon God will do this for me? He said he would, but I don't know. No. He said he staggered not at the promise of God. Folks, that's where real faith is. God tells us in his word certain things. He tells us certain things. If we take those, if we believe them with all of our heart, and stagger not at the promise of God. We can have what he promised. But it surely takes believing him, standing on what he says, not backing down, not wavering, because James said a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Says he's just like waving of the sea. Tossed to and fro by every wind in every direction. Wind's blowing one way, you blow with it. It changes course, blows another way. I'm talking about circumstances. You blow with it. You look at the circumstances. The Bible says we're to walk by faith and not by sight. Walk by faith in what God said and not what circumstances look like. Because with God, there's always hope. There's always hope of change. There's always hope that things can be changed by the Word of God. And with faith in His Word, you can take His Word and you can change any circumstance in your life. Any circumstance can be changed by the Word of God. Any illness can be healed. You can take the word of God and you can fight off sickness and disease and illnesses, no matter what they are. No matter if you've been given a bad report, you can take the word of God. Hey, that's not the final say. Yes, thank God for doctors. Thank God for medical science. Thank God for it. Because the Bible says not all men have faith. When you don't have faith, there's doctors. But see... They don't have the final say where faith is concerned, where the Word of God is concerned, because there's always another Word, and that's the Word of God. That's the final Word. That's the final authority. The Word of God is the final authority. You could take the Word of God 
like I said, and, and change anything. Change your body. Change your circumstance. Praise God. Hallelujah. Obey it. Be a doer of the word. Honor God. He'll honor you. Honor his word, and that word will work in you. Proverbs said that the word of God is life to those that find them, the words of God, and health to all their flesh, medicine to their whole body. And that is mentally and physically and spiritually to your whole body, health, praise God. Talking about finding a cure. Finding a cure for cancer and heart disease, diabetes. We've got it. We've got it. It's the Word of God. You can take it and drive out anything, any disease. You say, well, you've got to have a lot of faith to do that. Well, Jesus said, if you had faith, as small as a grain of mustard seed. Faith as a mustard seed. Faith as a seed. If you've just got faith enough to where you can speak to something. And again, I don't, I don't think he was comparing how small it was, but, but I think the, the message is if you had faith as a seed, as a mustard seed, even the smallest seed there is, then that's enough to sow with your mouth. That's enough to speak out of your mouth and sow faith. Praise God and sow. And it'll grow. And it'll grow. Praise God. You keep feeding it the word of God. Wash it by the water of God's word. Keep watering it by the word of God. And faith. And it'll grow. And you can speak to a mountain. If you had faith as a seed, you could speak to a mountain. Praise God. Believe and not doubt in your heart. But Bel believe that those things which you say, which you say, according to what God says now, believe that those things which you say shall come to pass. The Bible says you shall have whatsoever you say. Praise God. And you could say what God says with confidence, with, author with authority in Jesus' name. You can say what God says and what God's promised and believe that it will come to pass. And folks, it will come to pass. But the Bible says Abraham staggered not at the promise of God. Through unbelief. That's how you stagger through unbelief. Stagger not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Strong in faith, believing that what he promised, that he would perform it. See, a lot of people think that God can do something, but it's left up to him to do it. Well, that's not right. That's not what the Bible teaches. See, God has a part and we have a part. God's already done his part. He sent Jesus. He bore the stripes on his back for our healing. And the Bible says by his stripes we were healed. By his stripes we were healed. And if we were, we are. Isaiah said we are. Peter said we were. Isaiah was looking ahead to that whipping post. Peter was looking back said, by his stripes, we were. And if we were, we are. Praise God. Hallelujah. You say, well, why are so many people sick? Well, they, either they don't know that promise of God, or either there's unbelief and doubt that gets in the way. There's unbelief and doubt that gets in the way of people's healing. You say, well, now so-and-so was believing that they got healed and they died. Were they believing? Really believing? I could tell you right now that it wasn't God's fault. It wasn't God's fault that they died. 
I don't care how much they said they were believing. It wasn't God's fault. So there's only you and God. So whose fault is it? And I know this goes against a lot of people, what they believe and stuff and what they've been taught through the years. But folks, study your Bible. See what the Bible really says. Don't take people's word for it. Look in the Bible for yourself. And see what the Bible really says about things like that. I mean, that's important. That's detrimental. God wants us to live our life out. He wants to live a good long life. Psalms 91, 16 says, With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. With long life. You say, well, he's talking to David. Well, God has no respecter of persons. God has no respecter of persons. If he did it for David, guess what? That means that he meant for us to have it too. With long life, he would satisfy us and show us his salvation. He wants us to live our life out here on earth. He wants us to do what he's called us to do, feel the commission that he has for us to do. He doesn't want us to check out early. A lot of people says, well, I wish that I, I could just die and get on out of this old world and just go on to glory and be with Jesus. Why? I understand that you want to be going and being with Jesus, but God has a work for you to do. There's millions and billions of people that are lost and without the Lord. And we have a work to do. Everybody, every Christian has a work to do. Why do you not want to stay and finish the work that God has for you to do? And then, praise God, when it's finished, say, hey, Lord, I'm ready. Just be like Paul. I've run my race. I've finished my race. I've finished my course. And now I'm ready to depart and be with the Lord, which is far better. Of course it is. Praise God. Paul finished his course. He ran his race. He fought a good fight and kept the faith. That's what the Lord wants us to do. That's what he wants us to do. Fight the good fight. Finish our course. Keep the faith. Praise God. And then when we finished, we're satisfied. We're satisfied in our heart that we've done all that the Lord's called us to do. We finish, then we can say, hey, Lord, I'm ready. <laughs> and say, come on. Come on. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. No regrets. No regrets. The graveyard is so full of people that didn't finish their course, that didn't run their race, that did not do what God had for them to do could have reached I don't know how many people for the Lord could have preached the word of God could have written songs that would have touched hearts and led people to the Lord the graveyard's full of people like that Ecclesiastes 7 says why be foolish and die before your time you know you can be a fool and die before your time according to the word of God you could be a fool and die before your time said, Be not much over wickedness, neither be thou foolish. Why should thou die before thy time? Ecclesiastes chapter 7, I think it is. You die before your time. A lot of people says, Now when that time comes, no matter where you're at or what you're doing, you're just going to depart. You're just going to die. You'll be taken out some way or the other. Well, that's, that's pretty unstable right there. Do you think the Lord would fix it that way? No. Uh-uh. No. The, the Lord is a God of honor. He is a God of purpose. He's a God of order. Our Lord is. Say, well, it's appointed unto man once to die. And after this is judgment. Yeah. Absolutely. Wants to die. It's appointed. That's right. But it don't say, it don't say a specific, a specific date or a specific time. Yeah, I know there's a time to die. But I'm telling you folks, God wants you to live your life out. 
He wants you to finish your course. Remember that, you folks. So just go on. Just believe the Word of God. Just receive your healing. And then get up and be about the Father's business. You say, is it as simple as that? It's as simple as that. Believe in the Word of God. Receiving your healing. Standing on it, no matter what comes, no matter what goes, no matter how many reports. Lord, I'm trusting you. My faith's in you. I'm not staggering at your promise, but I'm believing you. And you promised by your stripes. And it's a fact that by Jesus' stripes, I am healed. And I receive it. I believe it. I'm not ready to depart yet. This is for somebody. I'm not ready to depart yet. I have much more that I feel in my heart that the Lord's called me to do. Well, I'll tell you right now. Go and receive your healing. Believe it and receive it. Watch it be manifested. Stand on the word. Then go on for God. Don't go with your normal life. You live a, a life for God. Present your body as a sacrifice, living sacrifice to God. Praise God. Don't go back to the things you were doing in the world. When God heals you, realize that who's healed you and who can keep you healed. Realize who can keep you healed. Jesus said, he told one person in the Bible, after he healed him, he said, Go and be healed. Let the worst thing come on you. Sin no more. Let the worst thing come on you. That's right. Go and sin no more. Let the worst thing come on you. That's what he told him. Praise God. Brother John, come bless us with a song. Go and sin no more. When God heals you, realize who, who it is that has healed you. Brother John Lawson. Glory. Well, God is good. Yes, he is. He's good all the time. God is good. You know he is. He's good all the time. You can search the whole world over. No greater friend you'll find. He's not good every now and then. God's good all the time. Oh, he's the one you call when your body is aching and wound up with pain. He can set you free and make you feel a spring in your step again. Oh, food on your table when you haven't got a dime. He's not good every now and then. God's good all the time oh god is good yes he is he's good all the time oh god is good you know he is he's good all the time you can search the whole world over no greater friend you'll find he's not good every once in a while He's good all the time. Oh God, He is almighty, and beside Him there is none other. He can save to the other most. He can change your life, brother. Oh, call on His name. He is still the same. He's not good every now and then. No, He's good all the time. Oh, now God is good. Yes, He is. He's good all the time. Oh, God is good. 
You know he is He's good all the time He'll search the whole world over No greater friend you'll find He's not good every once in a while He's good all the time One more time Oh, God is good Yes, he is He's good all the time Oh, God is good You know he is He's good all the time You can search the whole world over No greater friend you'll find He's not good every once in a while He's good all the time Thought about this Goes right along with what Sister Brenda was saying Jesus come to give life And give life more abundantly He didn't come to kill He didn't come to destroy He didn't come to He even said it I think not I've come to destroy men's life, but to save them. It's not God's will that any parish go to a place called hell. You can be born again. You can receive Jesus as Lord and Savior and enter in to the everlasting life. Oh, see, it's a choice. You'll have to choose it, friend. He won't force his way in on you. He won't make you take him, but he offers. And then the choice is yours. Sister Brenda. Mm, Holy is the Lord. Holy is the Lord. He's He's holy. Holy is the Lord. Holy is the Lord, He's holy, Jesus, you are high and lifted up, and your train fills the temple, you Holy, 
Thank you, Jesus. Holy is the Lord. Holy is the Lord. You're so holy. You are high. Tell him. And lift it up. We lift you up, Jesus. And your train fills the temple. Oh, thank you, Jesus. You're holy, holy. Holy is the Lord. Holy is the Lord. You're holy. He's a holy God. Praise God. And he inhabits the praises of his people. And when you praise him, when you lift your voice, and when you lift your hands and lift your heart to him, praise God, he will inhabit that. Because he can make all things new. He can fix things for you. He can make all things new. And he will, if you'll believe him, if you'll not stagger through unbelief. But if you'll believe in him, if you'll have faith in him, if you'll have that expectant confidence, praise God, then everything's going to be all right. He's going to work everything out for you. The Bible says he will perfect that which concerneth me. He'll perfect that which concerneth me. And you too, praise God. He's a good God. And he's surely worth serving, I'll tell you. Whew. If he never did another thing for us. Is surely worth serving. I'd like to invite my husband to come and bring forth the word of God. Break the bread of life with us. Brother Roger is going to come first. Brother Roger to come and say what the Lord's laid on his heart this morning. Brother Roger. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Um, man, I like how that Holy Spirit can get stared just by a few words what Brenda said there just uh, this train fills the temple Lord Jesus Whew. thank you Lord Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. All right. Thank you, Lord, the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. I'll get started here in a minute. Well, glory. Oh. It's just like a wind blowing by, Kenneth. He's good. Oh, go. Right so. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. My Lord. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord, I just want to thank him for what he's done in my life. This way. I want to 
thank him for where he's brought me from. And I thought I was going to say a few things. I ain't going to say what I thought I was going to say there. Uh, I just want to thank him today. and I just want to thank him for waking me this morning, Kenneth. I want to thank him for what he's done in my life, where he's brought me from. I want to thank him for you all. I want to thank him for... My Lord, I just want to thank him for my breath today. I want to thank him for even looking down on a filthy vessel like me before he saved me. Where he brought me from. My Lord, it's a good way. Anybody out there that don't have him, don't know him. I plead with you because I know where you're headed. You're headed for a place called hell if you don't have Him in your heart. If you ain't received Jesus, you can do it right now. Just tell Him to come into your life. He'll come into your life. He's no respecter of persons. I don't care what you've done today. I don't care how far you think you are from Him. He's right here waiting on you. He's here this morning. He's wherever you are. He's here this morning. Herb, I've failed him. you failed him. Jonathan's failing him right now. I tell you what. He's here in the, when we're in trouble. He says, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden. He'll give you rest. He says, take, he, just, just take him. He, his yoke's easy and his burden's light. My Lord, if, if you just know, he looked over it, he looked over Jerusalem, said, if you only, if you only knew your hour of visitation, if you only knew right now somebody out there, if you only knew. My Lord, he's calling somebody right now. My Lord, I wasn't planning this. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody out there is trying to make a decision. He's saying just surrender. He's waiting on you. I don't know who it is. Just give in. Thank you, Lord. That's all I got to say. Whoever out there is needing him right now, give in. He's wanting you. He's waiting. He's waiting for you. But he won't. He won't always strive with the man. Come to him now. Give your heart to him. I'm going to turn it over to Kenneth. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Brother. Thank you, brother. Thank you, brother. Praise God. Praise you, Lord. <laughs> well, I tell you, God is so good. So good. He loves us incredibly this morning. You that are watching, He loves you. You that are listening, He loves you. That's one thing about God. He loves you personally. He don't just love the whole world as a, as a whole, but He loves you personally. There's no one else like you. You might say, Brother Gross, after you don't know what kind of life I've lived and you just don't know what kind of person I am. Well, that may be true. But what I do know about you is God loves you. That's all I need to know anyway. And that He'll take He can take you and make a brand new person out of you. You can you can get rid of the guilt and the shame. And He can take and cleanse you with His blood. And you won't be the same. You'll be a new person. Now, He's calling. 
if you'll answer. That's all you got to do is just say yes. I believe on you, Lord. I'll, let me tell you something right real quick, and this will be just for you. One day there was a man that hated every Christian that was alive. <laughs> every person that mentioned Jesus' name. And he had an agenda to destroy every one of them. And he was on his way to do some of those things. And the Lord Jesus himself stopped him. This is after he rose from the dead. And he talked with him. And he made one of the greatest one of the greatest apostles that ever lived. And his name's Paul. Now that's the kind of love that God has for every individual everyone so now get on this road get into God's arms he'll love you every day praise God well thank every one of you for being tuned in I'm so glad to be here this morning praise God what an honor and privilege it is I look forward to every Sunday morning I enjoy it I'm so glad because uh, because God is real. This is not just uh, this is not just some religious thing, but God is real. His spirit is real. He knows how to use us and and talk through us and deal with us. But we're just so thankful of it, Brother Herb. So so thankful. And uh, just so appreciative of God's Holy Spirit and His mighty Word. Amen. Father, we thank You this morning. We'll just give You glory. Hallelujah to Your name. <coughs> Praise to You. We love You. Thank You for loving us. Thank You for helping us this morning. Now, Father, thank You for Your anointing. Thank You for Your mighty Word. All glory be to You. We're seeking that. We're seeking utterance from the Holy Spirit. And we have it. And we thank you for it. And to you be the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, let's turn our Bibles here to uh, Mark, if you will, the 16th chapter. I'd like to start there anyway. And we'll see. Praise God. <coughs> Hallelujah. <clears throat> Mark sixteen, fifteen. And he said unto them, This is our Lord Jesus. He said unto them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. To every creature. The gospel. <coughs> the gospel is good news. I think too many times we may have forgotten that. The gospel is good news. Notice what he, he didn't tell us to preach. <laughs> Watch out. He didn't tell us to preach our opinions. He didn't even tell us to preach our convictions. He told us to preach the gospel. One dear, dear brother said one time, said, live your convictions, but preach the word. Amen. Now there's a lot to be said there. I could go off on a, on a trail. But he said, live your convictions. 
but preach the word. We've heard many people say, well, if it's wrong for me, it's wrong for you. Well, we could say this, if it's right for me, it's right for you. And preach more convictions than we do the Word of God. And that's cost us. It's cost us. And preaching our opinions. And he didn't say go preach politics. Now I'm not saying, look, in saying that, I'm not saying sometimes some things don't need to be mentioned. Maybe they do. I'm not saying that. But primarily, primarily, we are to preach the gospel. This is where our salvation is then if we preach the gospel, we have to talk about Jesus Christ. We have to talk about God's plan of redemption and how He has redeemed us. Amen. Or else we're not preaching the gospel. We have to talk about what we've been delivered from. If Jesus has paid the ransom, what did he pay? Who did he pay it for? What has been paid? What's been paid? Now, if you polled most people, most church folk, They probably couldn't give you Bible answers to some of these things because, because they, they either just, they just don't know or, or they've rejected it, one or the other. There's some are both involved, I guess. But now Galatians says, Galatians 3.13 said, Christ hath. Now I, I pay attention to those past tense words in the Bible. They're not, they're, 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 they may be a small word, but they're definitely not insignificant. Now, amen. And so when the Bible uses those kind of, that kind of language, you perk up and pay attention and say, if Jesus has, then He already has. He's not, this is not something He has to do or going to do. We base too much on what we see and what we feel. And not that there's feelings that's, that's wonderful. Of course, there's all kinds of it in the Word of God. Well, maybe we're just not familiar with it. Of course they are. Amen. If some old sad sack come around, he said, well, I'm the most joyful person in the whole world. Well, I doubt it. You don't, I don't think you know what that is. Oh, yes, I am, but you can't tell me nothing about joy. I'm full of it. You ain't full of joy. You're full of something else. So joy is a Bible word. It's a Bible word. Well, surely you can feel joy, can't you? Well, there's a whole lot of them words. But Galatians 3.13 says, Christ hath, he hath. Past tense, he hath, he hath. Somebody say he hath. He hath, 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 he hath. That ought to ring. Get that ring and write in your spirit. He hath redeemed us from the curse of the law. Said being made a curse for us. One translation says he just took our place. He traded places. Well, sometimes that's the furthest thing from some religious people, uh, the furthest thing from what they teach and preach. Well, we can't worry about them this morning because our job is about the truth. So he hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is every man that hangeth on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Praise God. Well, that said a mouthful right there. And that's more than just words. That's facts. Amen. Now, if we'll focus in on some of those things, it will begin to change us. We'll begin to, 
will, something inside of us will, will, will start growing. Will start growing. You can start believing something you haven't believed before. Something that's right and something that's real. Amen. amen. I said amen. amen. Lillian B. Yeoman was a medical doctor and, and she had gotten deathly sick and the Lord healed her and raised her up off her deathbed. And she quit practicing medicine. And she started practicing a spiritual medicine. And, and I guess she found her calling. Amen. And she had a home that was sizable at that time. She had a number of bedrooms upstairs. And she started to take patients that were critically ill, just, just about gone. Yeah. Say it again. Terminally ill. And said when the ambulance would bring them in, bring them to her house, she would take their vital signs and she knew from experience about how close they were to leaving this earth. And she'd take them upstairs and, and this, now this is what she said. She said she would open up the, the Bible and, and Deuteronomy and start reading the curses. Listen to me. Then she would turn over to Galatians 3.13 and begin to read about Jesus who took those curses and redeemed us from them. Now you won't get on some shouting ground, you can get on some. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, then there you go, you just won't know. Amen. And she would read it to them. These are the curses. And here's what, Jesus, here's what God done through Jesus. He delivered us from those. He became a curse. And he'd read it to them. She'd read it to them. And she'd tell them, said, now, I want you to start saying this. Start quoting these words that she gave them about being delivered from the curse of the law. And said, I want you to say it as many times as you can. If you wake up during the night, say it and, re and remember this and repeat it. She told them just what to say. And the next day, after that, one of, one of those ladies had done that, she said, well, wh why are you wanting me to say these things? She said, it don't mean nothing to me. Well, that's the way it is for a lot of people at the start. You have to see it. And when God, when God quickens something to you, you can, you can have it. It'll change you on the inside. And so all during the day, she done the same thing. Read the scripture. Read the curse. Then read from Galatians 3.13 how Christ has delivered us from the curse of the law. Now remember, this woman's about dead. She's just about gone. And so she told her, said, now all during the night, said, quote this. When you wake up, quote it. And she told her, she made sure, said, now what are you saying? What are you saying? And she made sure she's saying it right. So all during the night happened again, next day, same scenario. Well, she said, this don't mean nothing to me. She said, why do you want me to say this? <laughs> she said, just keep saying it. Next night, she's done the same thing. Well, that morning, next morning, they're getting dinner ready, lunch ready, around 11 o'clock or something like that, and they heard, they heard somebody get up upstairs. I think none of them able to get up. And here she come down the stairs, a hollering, Well, glory to God! Said, I'm healed! I'm healed! Said he's delivered me from the curse of the law. There you go. Like taking medicine. Till you believed it. And then the medicine works. 
said, almost without fail. Now, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Let's stop right here just for a second. Don't be religious on me. Not a one of you. Don't, I, I don't like it, so don't do it. You've got to put great emphasis on God's Word. Great emphasis. You have to put, you have to put great admiration in what God has said in His Word. <clears throat> when you do that, it changes things. Are you hearing? And she said, without fail, almost every single person that come, she got them healed that way. Not doing nothing else. Not pray all night. No. They pray all night. You're going to have to believe something. A lot of people praying all night not believing nothing they say. And that kind of praying don't do you no good. Somebody said, oh yeah, the answer's prayer. Well, it's the answer to a lot of things, but it's not, it's not like you say it is. Oh, I need to get healed and I need to pray and I need, no, you need to believe something. That's what you need to do. If you cut out most of your praying and switch that over to believing, you'd do some good. That's right. Some people say, oh, that hurts my feelings. That's because you're religious. You, you're too religious. You've got to start believing what he said to you. I know. Let me tell you something. If Brother Gross was a Baptist, and I am at heart, but if I was a Baptist and practiced everything the Baptist practices, and I'm not, I'm not throwing off on the Baptist, let's get it straight, don't, don't get all messed up here. Um, things would be different. Quite different. The place would be full this morning. That's right. They'd be completely full. Anything we'd done, we, anything we'd do, we'd be supportive. But I couldn't be like I am. I'd have to be like them or somebody else. Well, I, I, I'm not interested. I'll just tell you the truth about it. That's not what God called me for. And there's no put down. But I have got to do what God has called me. And this ain't about me this morning. It's only about if I do what God wants me to do. That's my involvement. The rest is all about Him it's about His Word. It's about the Holy Spirit. It's about seeking the glory of God. Seeking to say what He says. Amen. Are you here? Now again, He said, let's go back. He said, go preach the gospel. He said, don't go preach politics. Don't go preach your own ideals. Amen. Even though they may be good ideals, he didn't say nothing about that. Go tell everybody what you think about it. And certainly don't go preach false doctrine. Never call nobody to do that. Now we're talking about the Lord here. Now the Lord knows what he's doing. Now I'll tell you something about him. He can't control you or me. And he don't. We found that out. And if he could, there'd be none of that. Not a bit of it, Herb. There wouldn't be one preacher stand up this morning on Sunday morning and, and, and say anything that is contrary to God's Word. Nothing. Nothing. Or do anything contrary to, to the way he would have you to do something. Not a one. Well, why is that? Well, because he's not in control of you. He's not in control of me. The Bible tells us to submit ourselves to God. Why would you have to submit that if He's in control of you? To hear some people talk, He's in control of everything, including them. Woo, the Holy Spirit, God, oh, I mean, He just controlled me. He made me get up and shout. And he made me get up and dance. He did not. You've done that yourself. And that's all right. And that's okay. He made me do this. He made me do that. No. 
He don't make anybody do anything. Right. Now you might feel that don't you to do so. Well, pour it on it, praise God. I'm all for it. No. And somebody said, well, he ain't never made me shout. He won't because he don't. He, uh, that's why he ain't never done it because he don't do that. Well, he ain't never made me dance. Well, he won't. that's the reason being because he won't. He won't. Well, somebody said, he ain't never made me run. He won't. We've missed the whole thing. He won't. It's not up to him. That's like saying, well, I tell you what, even against my will, he made me believe him. He just made me believe it, and I tell you what, I didn't want to, didn't care a thing about it, but he made me do it. Well, we ought to know that he don't do that, does he? And I tell you what, I wanted to continue drinking, continue partying, and I tell you what, he made me get saved. He don't do that. I said he don't do it. Now they may be something deal with you. The, the, the Spirit of the Lord would deal with you so mightily you just don't really know what to do. But that is the love of God and the goodness of God uh, of, of talking to you and trying to get you off of that path of destruction and trying to save your life. Trying to save your life. Now you might experience that. Oh, we've missed too much. We've hung out on the wrong shore and camped out at the wrong place and been, been reading the wrong stuff. Praise God. So he says here, go and preach the gospel. This gospel is all inclusive to Jesus Christ. Are you hearing? It's all about Jesus. And it's all about the Holy Spirit and God the Father. That's what the gospel's about. And then he just included us in it. Now, if we can do that, we'll, we'll be so much better off. It, it'll be a sight. It'll be a sight. Are you hearing? Preach the gospel to every creature. Now listen here, verse 16. He that believeth this gospel that's being preached and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. Now this is the words of Jesus Christ. This also let us see that it's not in God's hands, it's in our hands. Right. To preach the gospel. Now we do nothing without Him, that's, that's clear, there's no question about that. And can't. But, it's in our hands to either believe it, or not. Or not. And he said, those that believe it shall be saved. Now that word saved, we, 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 we've been so religious minded that all we can think about is being saved from hell and going to heaven. That's about the sum of it. Now, is that right? Yes, it absolutely is. But that's really not, that, that's only a small part of it. Well, I mean, it's major as, as far as eternity, but it's a small part, in, including... Included in that word being saved is being delivered. Being freed. Being healed. Being changed. Everything that God is and has for us is included in that word saved. Everything. From from, from, from things like he said, I would that you would prosper and be in health even as your own soul prospers. That's included in that. 
My word is health to all, to life and to all those that find them, and health to all of your flesh. That's included in that. Wealth and riches shall be in his house to those that fear God and that will that will honor him and his work. That's included in that. He said, I'll deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence, from the arrow that flieth by day and the destruction that wasteth at noonday. It's included in that. With long life I'll satisfy you and show you my salvation. That's included in this. He give his angels charge over you and keep you in all your ways. That's included in this word. Say. We've made it too narrow. And, and it's not that way. It's broad. It's, it's deliverance. The king has come. The king has come. And he's, and he's bought and paid for something. He, 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 the, the cost was his life. The ransom cost him. On the other hand, that's how much God thinks of us. That's how much He loves us. That it costs someone everything. Glory to God. Men, we ought to get very busy preaching more of the gospel than this other stuff. This is what changes people. Amen. Glory to God. And quit... Straighten up. Straighten up. Praise God. He didn't come to make us more comfortable where we was at in our life that we had. Make us more comfortable. He come to save us. He come, he come to deliver us. Deliverance to the captive. Set at liberty them that are bruised. Preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Man, this is it. Glory to God. We don't have to sit around and be sick. We don't have to sit around and let the devil steal our lives. Praise God. Man, we preach a lot of stuff around here and we need to, we need to pipe up here. Well, I mean, our ears need to pop. Come on, somebody needs to do something. Somebody needs to say, yeah, I believe that. I believe that. This old religious stuff ain't helped me one bit. Listen, look, listen, listen. I'll I tell you one way to figure this thing out pretty quick. Just see if what you believe works. Just see if it works. Now, if you want to deceive yourself, you'll say, oh yeah, man, it all works. And ain't nothing working. Just see if it works. If it don't work, the best thing you can do for something that don't work is get rid of it. And when it comes to natural things, something that don't work, we wouldn't have it. Amen. Amen. You go to the store to buy something, you say, hey, does that thing work? You say, well, I think it'll work. But you want to buy it anyway, don't you? And take it home with you? Well, so hold on a minute. You, I thought you said it didn't work. Yeah, but look at it. It's pretty. It looks good. It'll look good sitting around. Yeah, but this is meant to do a job. It don't even work. Well, if you went to the car dealership and they got to look like a brand new car sitting there and you say, boy, does, whew, that thing, I bet it drives good, don't it? Say, it don't drive. It don't even run. You say, but you'd like to buy it, wouldn't you? And try it out. Just sit in it. You can, we'll, we'll haul it down there to your garage, get a record and pull it in there. Every time you get ready to go out and sit in it, you can just go out in the garage and sit down in it and look at it. But you say, but it don't run. Therefore, I don't want it. I have no need for it. Amen. But we'll do religious things just the opposite. We'll say, oh yes, yes, I'll take that now. I'll just take that and I'll just, I'll just get it. We'll just hug it up here like this right here. Sorry about that. We'll just hug it real good and kiss on it. So boy, you're just wonderful to me. And it don't even work. Amen. It don't even work. What do you do with things that don't work? You get rid of it. 
Now, I'll tell you something right now. Maybe contrary to what some of you think because you're so used to this other stuff. The Word of God works. Faith works. Real faith works every single time. The Word of God does not return a void. It's just your religion that turns, returns void. Your ways return void. The faith in the things you have it return void. But not God's Word. He said it won't. If He said it won't, then it don't. And, and our, what, here's what religion calls you to do. It just, it just shifts the blame without saying it over here on God. Well, if He wanted to, He would. How many times have you heard that? Well, when He gets ready to, He will. Well, maybe, and then they'll say, well, maybe it's not His will. All they're doing is shifting that. They put it from, they got it off of us, and it starts out with us believing this and being saved and delivered, totally saved and delivered. And, and they shift it to over on God. That's what all religious stuff does. That's the lie of, of that. That's the lie. And say, well, if he wanted to, he would. Because you know God, and, and nobody would disagree with this. He can do anything. God can do anything. Let me tell you, God can do anything. Anything he wants to do, he can do it. That ain't nothing more than religious. And then when it don't happen to you, you say, or your friend, or your brother, or your sister, you say, well, he just he didn't want to. Well, now you're making a lot of assumptions. And you won't find any of them in the Word of God. And this is the problem with this. Faith, there's no faith there. You, you voided all that out. You said, this, this don't matter. This, is, this has nothing to do with my salvation. Well, sure it does. It has everything to do with it. That's the way you got in or you didn't get in. And if it started off with you believing something, believing, he that believeth, he that believeth not. I'm going to take a part of a scripture and dissect it out. Jesus said, he that believeth hath. Let's put a period right there for right now. It won't make nobody mad. He that believeth hath, hath what? What he believes. Now people want to talk against the faith stuff. You're, all you are is talking against God's word. You're talking against or Abraham. You're talking against David. You're talking against actually one of the most. There is no more prominent preacher. Hallelujah. Prominent preacher of faith than Jesus Christ. Now your little old religious uh, teachings may not teach you that. But there's no more prominent preacher on faith than Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So quit letting the devil lie to you. Jesus talked about faith more than anyone. More than any writer of the New Testament. Jesus talked about it more. He started the thing. Amen. That's right, He started the thing. That's right. He said before Abraham was, and Abraham is the father of our faith, Jesus said, I am. Well, religious mind said, well, you're not even yet 50 years old. Well, what's 50 got to do with anything? And you said you're before Abraham? We don't believe it. Yeah, we know you don't. But it don't change the fact. So the most prominent preacher, there's no one that ever had any more faith than Jesus Christ. No one, no man alive. Somebody said, yeah, but look at him. Yep. I ain't going to go into all that right now because I've got to go another direction. He's a human being. He operated fully as a man. And he had faith in God. And that's how he operated all the time. Every day of his life he was here. He operated that way. Now glory to God. Amen. 
I said, Amen. And faith works. I said, Faith works. And and you can you can come up with all kinds of old religious ideals about Jesus. But I guarantee you, if it's just a religious ideal, it won't hold up against God's word. So I just seem to take the word. Why do I want the other for? Somebody said, well, praise God. Hallelujah. Lots of stuff said. But Jesus, the, according, to, according to John, the Word of God, it made flesh, dwelt among us, had to be anointed. Why in the world does the Word itself, Himself, not just written in a book here, but the Word Himself, have to be anointed. Well, if you can answer that in form, then we'll have something to talk about. If you can't, then I'll just shut up and keep it quiet. I don't want to hear it. Does that deserve a, an answer? Does it? Well, we ought to ask ourselves. Religious people are afraid of asking these questions. They won't ask them. Isn't it, isn't it something? Well, why did he have to be anointed if he's the Word of God? And if some people think, well, he's God, he's, he's operating as God. Well, then are you telling me that God had to be anointed himself? Well, they, they, things happen there that just don't work out. God himself went and got baptized in the River Jordan and, and then God spoke to God and said, well, hey God, and he said, hey God. No, it didn't work out like that. He said, no, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Amen. Well, what, now, now let's uh, hold it right here. Praise God. Now, get over your old religious stuff and, and don't cut the television off or the radio. Now listen here. What, associate being pleased with something. Well, please, God said. Now associate that with something if you can think of it right quick. What would that be? There ain't but one thing in the Bible said that pleases God that I know of, and I might be wrong. And, and it says, without faith, it's impossible to please Him. Now here he's talking about his son, and he said, he's, I'm, I'm not just pleased. I couldn't be pleased anymore. I'm so pleased that I'm well pleased. Enough to speak it out of heaven. Praise God. I said hallelujah. And he saw the Spirit of God descending on him. And now, he's not just Jesus anymore. He's Jesus the Christ. He's not just Jesus as we know Him. He's the Messiah as they know Him. But He's the, the M Messiah, the Christ. Now He's anointed. And now He's going to start doing things. He hadn't done them yet. Now see, this is where uh, uh, re religious people fall out with you. It's like, well, now you're just saying things that ain't so. No, I, I didn't write this Bible. That's all in the Bible. And there's one thing that, that God's Word said, that the Spirit of God will glorify the Lord Jesus and God the Father. And that's exactly what He does. And if you're not prepared for some of it, you'll turn it off. If you're used to people lying to you, you'll turn it off real quick. Well, God don't lie. I believe Him. And so now He's the man, Christ Jesus, or Jesus the Christ. So He obviously had been living by faith. By faith. Now, not doing works. No works yet. Well, why is that? Somebody answer that. 
And, if you, and answer it honestly. Don't say, well, he just didn't want to. No, that ain't no answer. That ain't no answer. No, 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 no. I'll answer it because you could. You may say, <laughs> oh, it goes against my grain. It goes against everything I've been taught. I don't care if it does. It's just the truth. He couldn't. He couldn't because out of his own words, he said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because. Now, here's the reason. Now, this is what religion won't tell you. So religious stuff and these religious people. I call them, when I say religious, I mean indoctrinated with something other than the Word of God. That's why I say that. He said, because he hath anointed me. Anointed you. Jesus, you don't need to be anointed. You're the Son of God. You don't need to be anointed. You, now, if we, if we could fast forward and read something that the apostle said by the Spirit of God about him, we'd say, well, Jesus, you're the Word. Man, you're the Word made flesh. You can do anything. You're God. You're acting as God. Now, he'd sit down and have a long talk with you if he chose to. He'd say, no, I'm not acting as God. I'm a man just like you. I had to become a man just like you in order to redeem you. And I'm going to redeem you. And all this, all my adult life that I've been living, I've been living by this word, by God's word that proceeded out of his mouth. I've been living that way. I've been living that way. I've not been anointed yet to heal the sick and to raise the dead and cast devils out, but I've been living by the word. And now, he said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. And He began to go out and preach. And He began to go out and do what God had called Him to do. And now, his, not only is He anointed, but His words are anointed. Come out of Him. Phew! Everything in Him. Jarred when he said that. He jarred them out. Praise God. He drove them out. I mean, it was so powerful when they heard it. They shook and they shivered and they whimpered and they whined and some of them yelled out. Why? Because his words are anointed now and that's different. It's different. Praise God. Amen. I wish we'd get a hold of some of it. It would change our own words. Some of our words have become anointed. By the Spirit of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. These people make our job tougher. Harder. Trying to wiggle through and worm through and get through and wade through some of this old doubt and unbelief. The people's preached all these years and all this time and feel people completely full of it. And then you have to wade through with God's Word. Well, we'll just keep wading. Hallelujah. <laughs> we'll wade on. Hallelujah. And I'll tell you one thing. I'm going to say it because my time's... I've not said near what all I was going to say this morning. But here's the thing. It works. If what you don't have, if it do, if what you have, if it don't work, get rid of it. Trade it in for something that works. Works. Proven that it works. Tested and tried. Hallelujah. I've tested it myself. I've tried it myself. Prove that it works. Glory to God. And the other stuff don't work because it can't work. It has no power. It has no truth. And, and, and it does not work. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So it's time to preach the gospel. The gospel... Of Jesus Christ. Where freedom is. Where liberty is. Amen. 
Hallelujah. Don't you look at this man behind this pulpit this morning. You fasten your eyes on Jesus. That's a problem. Why in the world did God call somebody like you? I don't know, but he did, and I'm here. But he called me so I can talk about him. So you could look at him. Not me. It ain't about me. It's not about Brenda. It's not about any one particular person. It's about him. It's about Jesus. And the Spirit of God, if we listen to him, every sermon we preach with him, with the Spirit of God, will point right straight toward Jesus. It'll point right straight toward him. And he'll say, look at him. Look, look at him, praise God. Look at him. What a wonderful Savior. Look at him. Every time. And, 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 and then, it's like looking in a mirror. When you look at him, you're looking at you. Woo, thank you, Lord. Because I'm in him. I'm in Christ. Oh, look at him. Thank you, Lord. Oh, I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm in you. You're in me. And it won't point to this other stuff. It's useless. Well, our time is gone. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Appreciate that. Said a man said he was touched from Brother Roger today. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> and we'll say something to all of you. Receive. Receive today. God's word. Receive. Receive your healing. Jesus bought and paid for it. So Father, I receive. I receive my healing. I receive my healing. Thank you that I'm healed by your stripes. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. I've been redeemed from the curse of the law. Amen. God bless you today. Until next week, we'll see you then. Thank you for tuning in to God's Word for Today with Kenneth and Brenda Groves. Send all correspondence to 968 West City Dam Road, Keeley, Kentucky, 40737. Or call 606-528-4671. We invite you to watch live at www.thegospeleagle.com. The Word of God will build you up and give you His inheritance. Call us with your prayer request at 606-528-4671. Thank you for your support.